Randy was over at his dad's a few days ago, and he had made some cowboy candy. Now, it is not FDA approved, but we're gonna do it just like dad. He's been making it a long time. He ain't dead. I'm sure it's fine. So we're gonna make it his way, right away, right now. I have four pounds of jalapenos, some garlic, some white distilled vinegar, 5%, sugar, basil, and dill wheat. That's all you're gonna need. Now, the absolute first thing that you need to do when you're gonna do any kind of jalapeno recipe or any kind of garlic recipe where you need a lot of garlic is get you some gloves. Good gloves, not the little dollar store gloves. Get you some good ones. If not, your eyes will be burning, your lips will be burning. You can actually eat the skin off of your fingers, get you a pair of gloves, and then we'll get started. Okay, we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you three, since I already have most of the four pounds done. I'm just gonna cut the end off, cut it right down the center, and take his, the seeds out. And I don't really care too much about whether or not I take all of that out or not. The rib, it really doesn't matter to me. And we're gonna take these seeds out. And then I leave like, you know, four or five seeds, you know, just a little bit of seed. You don't have to take them all out unless you want no heat at all. Now, if you want absolutely no heat, then you need to take the ribs out and the seeds. But we like a little heat. So we're gonna do it like this. Okay, now that we've got all that cut up, we get these gloves off, because I won't need them anymore. All right, we'll set those aside. Now, as far as the way you cut your jalapenos, it really doesn't matter. I've seen it where they put it in a food processor and you know just really pulverized it. I've seen him slice them, but Randy's dad said this is the only way to do it. So that's the way we're going to do it today because this is dad's cowboy kid. Okay, now the basic recipe for your juice is two cups of sugar per pound and one cup of vinegar per pound. So I have four pounds. I'll need four cups of vinegar, so that's where we're gonna start. Okay, and I'm gonna need eight cups of sugar. And I know that sounds like a whole lot of sugar, and it is. There we go, there's our eight cups of sugar. Now we're gonna get that eye turned on. We're gonna get that sugar melted and get it up to a boil. Okay, we're going for a high flame. We need to get this up to a boil. Y'all remember what I just said about don't touch the jalapenos with your bare hands? Well, don't touch that glove either. I took those gloves off and I went like this and pulled them off instead of ripping them off inside out. Touch my eyeball and it is dripping tears and yeah, whatever. Anyway, don't do that. And I'm just gonna give this a little stir just, just because I can, not because it's necessary. But we're gonna give it a stir. And I'm still waiting for that bowl. 
Okay, we're boiling. We're at a good rolling boil now. And we're going to add those jalapenos in. Be careful you don't spatter because that will burn. Now we're going to set a timer for seven minutes after it boils. When this comes, we're going to let this come back up to a boil, and then we're going to set a timer for seven minutes. Now I'm going to get that lid on there so it'll come up to a boil quicker. Okay, I'm boiling. I'm going to give it one more stir. I'm going to put the lid on it, and I've started my timer for seven minutes. Okay, now I got seven minutes left. So I'm going to start getting my jars ready. And what he said was that we need to like just crush a little bit our garlic. So I'm just going to do it the easy way, just like that. And he said it was one garlic clove per jar. So, if it's a real little bitty thing, I'll put two. If it was a nice size one, we'll go ahead and just put the one. Now, I've had my jars in this really good hot water. And now we're gonna set them out and get them filled with our seasoning. And I'm thinking I probably won't get more than six pints. So, if I need more jars, I can always get some more, but I, I'm pretty sure I can do it in the six. <laughs> now we're going to put the garlic that we crushed down in each jar. There we go. All right. Now we need one teaspoon of basil per jar. One teaspoon of that dill wheat in each jar. That's it for our seasonings. All right, seven minutes up, flame off, lid off. Give it a little stir. Now we're gonna get it in the jars. Okay, now we're gonna start filling the jars and I'm using a slotted spoon. Because to start with, that's why you have these handy dandy things so you don't make a mess. Now. And drop those into the jars. We're not going to pack them now because we want that juice in there. But we don't want a jar full of juice and no jalapenos. So we're going to do it like that. And in we go. I don't even think I'm going to get sick, y'all. I'm not. Guaranteed I'm not. <laughs> Four pounds makes four pints, y'all. And now I've wasted that. Dad, yeah, that makes me mad. You know, Randy's dad said I was supposed to get six pints out of that four pounds. I did not. I have a good four jars, and that's it. There's only just a little bit of jalapeno swimming in here. But now we need to take that juice and finish filling our jars to just under the, just over that rim, like a quarter of an inch headspace. 
You don't want to leave much headspace at all because we are not water bathing. He says it's totally unnecessary. Oops. But we're not. Try to get the last of those little pieces of jalapeno out of there. There we are. And now I have a paper towel with some vinegar on it. And I'm gonna run that around that glass to make sure they don't have anything on there. Any sugar or anything like that that would obstruct the seal. Now we're gonna get our lids on there. Put those rings on. And we're gonna put them on good and tight. There we go. Now I'm gonna put it on good and tight. Right. Here we go. And he said there was no reason, no need to debubble, which. With all that liquid, it's probably fine. Tighten that one down. And that's it. There you have it. Randy's dad said, all you have to do is leave it sit on the counter and it will seal itself and then it's good for four to six months. You do need to wait a good six weeks before you open it again because it needs time for all those seasonings to meld in there and get all that flavor all through them. And then my favorite way to use it is with cream cheese. I just pour like half of one of these jars over some cream cheese and then serve it with crackers. That is amazing. Randy, on the other hand, likes it with just cheese and crackers, like Swiss cheese and jalapenos and crackers. This would be really good for that. And I have used it to, on like grilled chicken or grilled pork. Anything you put on the grill, just put you a little dollop of that on there and give it that good glaze. Yes, there you have it. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.